Hi everyone, uh, my name is Sophie, I'm a senior web engineer at Monzo Bank in the UK and I'm going to show you how we use Next.js for both our public and internal web apps. A bit about Monzo to begin with. We're a UK based bank, we're best known for our bright hot coral cards and our award winning customer service. Uh, we're a bank that lives on your phone so we don't have any physical branches and our apps make banking really easy and give you better visibility of our finances through things like instant transaction notifications, categorising transactions, keeping your money organised in separate pots. Um, we've also branched out into the USA, although it is early days at the moment, but you can join our waitlist. And Monzo is one of the UK's most recommended brands, so obviously we're doing something right. And when it comes to web, a lot of people don't actually realise that we do web at Monzo because the main, the main customer interface is that app and we're famous for having an astonishing number of backend microservices. So I think at last count, it was something like over 1600, but we do have quite a few web properties as well. There's our customer support system, which our customer support team use to do everything from chat to customers to speaking to them on the phone and crediting checks to people's accounts. There's Monzo Home, which is an internal app that all staff members can use to make sure their information's up to date and see things like organization charts. We've got a web app for the front end of our internal incident management system, and that's powered underneath by a Slack app. And we've actually open sourced that back end. Um, it's called Response, and it's on our GitHub. It's very cool. I do recommend checking it out. And when it comes to public web apps, there's Monzo.me, which gives you a personalised link that you can send to people and they can send you money. And then there's Pay Anyone, which lets you send a link to anyone to claim some money from you. And there's our emergency banking interface in case you lose your phone and card, where you can see the last 90 days of transactions and freeze your card if you need to. And excitingly, this year we launched our first full featured online web banking app for our business customers. So this is a monumental event for Web at Monzo. I, I'm really excited. And business customers can see details of their transactions. They can make payments, download statements, move money between accounts and their pots. And they can see account insights uh, like total spending and income and outgoing over the last few months. And many of the apps I've just shown you are powered by Next.js and we do use it for most of our web apps at Monzo, both externally and internally. So why did we opt for Next.js as a framework? For us, the main draw of Next was the ability to generate web apps that are both client and server side. And while it's okay if your internal apps are purely client side, uh, server side rendering helps us to make sure that our web apps are accessible and performant. If you've ever tried to get server side rendering worked on a working on a React app without something like Next, you'll know it's not that simple. So it's fantastic to have it basically straight out of the box. We aren't a big team of web engineers at Monzo, so it's really vital that it's quick to get going. We're mostly spread between our customer service tooling and our business banking app. So for those web properties that kind of fall between those things, it's often back-end engineers who are contributing and you know they can get by but they might not be as confident at React um, as the web folks are. So Next gives us a lot of the features out of the box that would previously have involved quite a bit of boilerplate. For example, routing is super easy um, and we don't need anything on top like React Router. Um, and it's not too much of a departure from a normal client-side app as well. So for those engineers who do have a bit of React experience, there isn't too much of a learning curve. And it just works. Like, I find as new releases of Next come out often, um, we end up removing libraries that have since been built into Next. So for example, we'll be using CSS modules with SAS that we were configuring ourselves, but now we can just use them directly with Next because it's built in. And it's just a bit less for us to think about and less for the contributing backend engineers to get their head around as well. For example, another, another example, uh, one of the re recent Next releases included custom headers in the Next config and that's been great for us because we send a content security policy header with every response. So let's take a closer look at our Next setup at Monzo. Here's that business banking web app again. Um, we've got a lot of dynamic routes here, so different accounts have different IDs um, and it's those that we use in the URL path to tell the app which account to display. So when you click one of the tabs on the left, it'll take you through to a dynamic route. And they're all next link components as well. So we can take full advantage of that client side routing. So um, that shared state will be persisted, but if a page is generated on the server, that link will work. As for the dependencies, there are a few that are invaluable for our next setup. So we've got a component library, which integrates seamlessly with next. 
Uh, we've actually got everything in a mono repo. So to make sure that um, all of those mono repo dependencies are transpiled, we use next transpiled modules. We share a lot of those libraries between all of our apps. So it's really invaluable. Uh, we also use the Nookies library for reading and manipulating cookies. Uh, so we use those for things like session management. Our internal platform has a GraphQL uh, um, API. So we use Next with Apollo to get our internal Next apps talking to the GraphQL server. So we haven't actually tried that one with, with server-side routing yet. And we do actually use a custom server, server in our internal apps. Um, we've got to proxy the requests. We would really love to be able to configure a proxy in the Next config because Using a custom server does disable automatic static optimization, but for, as I said, like for an internal app, it's not the end of the world. Um, our business banking app is hooked up to Sentry and I used the with Sentry example on the next GitHub to get that set up and it works a treat. Um, this is actually a screenshot from that example itself, but we do have something very similar set up. Uh, the git commit for us will be injected by our Docker file at build time. For the public web apps, uh, our platform is made up of Go microservices with API layer microservices on top. And they are effectively back ends for front ends if you're familiar with that pattern. Um, so our next apps will talk to those APIs to fetch the data that they need. And for internal apps, it's much the same, except those apps will talk directly to the Apollo server, which means we can take advantage of things like making one client request to get information from multiple places. Um, when it comes to build and deployment, we host our web apps on our own platform, which runs on AWS. And when we deploy, our builder service will run the app Docker file, which will then build the next app, and that produces a Docker container image. Then our deployment service will spin up some Kubernetes pods running the container. We export the next apps during the build stage so that we can grab those static assets that, uh, assets that are generated and then upload them to S3 before rolling out the pods that are running the app itself. And this is so that the assets will always be available if you're looking at the site while we're deploying it. Because, because we can't guarantee which Kubernetes pod your browser will hit for those assets. It could be the one we've just deployed or it could be the one that was previously deployed um, until we've finished rolling out all of the pods. And Next produces CSS and JS bundles with hatches as the name. So we can't predict what they'll be called either. So this expertly crafted work of art diagram is a bit like what the request flow would look like once we've deployed. And finally, we've had an increase in the number of web apps over the last year or so. So I put together a command line tool that will generate a new next app for you. A bit like create next app, but it's totally specific to our setup at Monzo. The output will differ depending on whether you need an internal or external web app because there's different authentication systems, different technologies. So internal apps using GraphQL. Um, and while we do still have a few straight up client side React apps with create React app, it is our intention that all of our new web apps at Monzo will be next apps. And what you get out the other end is a very basic but production ready app with Kubernetes manifests all set up for you, all of those basic dependencies that you need to run on our platform. And then the developers can add anything they need on top of that. And there you have it, a very quick rundown of how we use Next at Monzo. Um, I will be on Discord, happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you very much for listening.